Hi gang, of all the regiments of Warhammer 40k's Astra Militarum, the Cadian Shock Troopers are one of the most recognisable. An elite regiment of professionals from the completely militarised fortress world of Cadia, fated across the Imperium and copied by many other regiments. So in this video I'm going to look into the lore of Cadia, its history, how its regiments were trained, its rise and its fall. The Astra Militarum is a colossal organisation. As the Imperium's primary fighting force, it draws its regiments from every planet within it, from regiments of parade-drilled infantry, to guerrilla fighters taken from the harshest of death worlds, to cavalry regiments from dark feudal worlds, but looming disproportionately over all of this are the regiments of Cadia. Cadia was a fortress world near the Eye of Terror, built as a bulwark against chaos incursions. And the regiments raised there are considered some of the most elite in the Imperium, trained almost since birth in combating the ways of the great enemy. Over its history as an Imperial world, Cadia contributed far, far more regiments than normal to its defence, each considered so effective, well-trained and resourceful that the Cadian system was emulated by many other Astra Militarum regiments and planetary defence forces across the galaxy. That particular skill and grim resolve was bred into the people of Cadia over almost eight millennia of constant warfare. As Cadia itself weathered raids, invasions and black crusades from the Eye of Terror, and its shock trooper regiments deployed across the Imperium defended planets from Xenos threats, heretical uprisings and rebellions. But all this almost ended during Abaddon the Despoiler's 13th Black Crusade, when Cadia finally fell, the planet overrun by the hordes of chaos and its crust split apart. But despite losing their homeworld, the Cadian regiments still fight on, replenishing their numbers wherever they can, training new recruits in the field and continuing the traditions and techniques developed over 8,000 years of warfare. The system of Cadia, for most of its existence, consisted of 10 planets and was situated in the Segmentum Obscurus of the Imperium, right on the edge of the Eye of Terror. The Eye was a colossal warp storm, a vast area where real space and the warp crossed over, created originally by the fall of the ancient Eldar Empire and the subsequent awakening of the chaos power Slanesh. Within the Eye, space and time had little meaning and reality was twisted by the powers of the warp. It was a perilous place. The pirates, raiders and renegades who occasionally inhabited its fringes existed alongside the demons of the warp themselves. Whole systems and worlds were forever caught within the Eye many of them demon worlds fought over by the forces of the Chaos Powers. And after the Horus Heresy, it also became a refuge for the traitors who had turned on the Emperor. Heretic Astartes and their mortal followers who fought great battles for dominance over the worlds within it. But travel into and out of the eye was even more dangerous than just being in there. The storms were strongest along its edges and getting a whole fleet in and out intact was practically impossible, except at one point. The system of Cadia existed near a stellar phenomenon known to the Imperium as the Cadian Gate, the only stable route in and out of the Eye of Terror. No one knew for sure why the Cadian Gate existed, but one long-held theory involved the Cadian Pylons. The planet of Cadia was studded with strange structures that predated any human settlement by millennia. Thousands of these pylons existed across the planet, tall, thin lengths of inert black stone, each reaching half a kilometre into the sky and threaded with tiny tunnels. No one knew what they were or what they were designed for, and even probes sent into the tunnels would often never return. But scholars theorised that it was these structures that were in part responsible for the Cadian Gate, stabilising the warp storms in some way. And while Cadia itself had the majority of these, other planets and systems nearby had similar structures. But for millennia their real purpose remained a mystery. It's unknown when or how the planet of Cadia was settled or how it came by its name. It was discovered by the Imperium around 150 years into the Great Crusade by word bearers forces exploring the Segmentum Obscurus. And it was the word bearers who first recorded the existence of the Eye of Terror and the strange planet nearby. Investigating, their Primarch Lorgar discovered a tribal society of vila eyed humans who worshipped the four great powers of chaos and spoke a language that, at first glance, was extremely similar to that used on his homeworld of Colchis before the coming of the Imperium. 
It was these chaos worshippers who first opened the word bearer's eyes to the powers beyond the veil, eventually causing them to turn from the emperor and dedicate themselves to the worship of the chaos gods, and to start their decades-long preparations for what would become the heresy itself. But at the time, so as to cover their tracks and having learnt everything they could, the word bearers bombarded the planet with cyclonic torpedoes and wiped out the tribes, as well as any trace of human life. But Cadia's return to obscurity didn't last for long. After the Horus heresy, the remnants of Horus's traitor forces were driven back, many of them fleeing into the Eye of Terror to escape the judgement of the Imperium. After several hundred years, the Imperium mostly considered them dead and gone, a memory from a darker time, but in 781 M31, Abaddon the Despoiler launched the first of his Black Crusades out from the Eye and into real space. His fleet came into conflict with a Black Templar's picket fleet led by Sigismund himself, former first captain of the Imperial Fists and now first High Marshal of the Black Templars, but after a short conflict the Chaos Forces narrowly escaped and they rampaged across a thousand nearby systems before their goals achieved they were eventually beaten back into the eye. In the aftermath of this, it was decreed that the sector should be reinforced to monitor further incursions, and Cadia was resettled in the standard Imperial style, with a huge naval port built at the nearby Belis Corona and an Inquisition presence on Nemesis Tessera. But in fact, this turned out to be more a lure than a threat. In 597M32, the Second Black Crusade sailed out from the eye, but this time aimed at besieging and destroying this new Imperial settlement. Over five years, the new Imperial presence was systematically destroyed, the fortress on Nemesis Tessera defiled, and Bellis Corona itself cursed before the forces of Chaos could once again be pushed back. And it was after this, as the Imperium realised that this was going to be a persistent threat, that Cadia was transformed into the fortress world it was mostly known as. The system was seeded with orbital defences, and the surface of Cadia itself was covered with defence laser silos and shield generators. What remained of the previous settlements were demolished and rebuilt into the great fortress cities known as Casas, each surrounded by concentric ring walls separated by bastions and moats, and topped with defensive weapon batteries. Even the civilian buildings within these cities were to be fortified. Built to military specifications, the street layouts designed to funnel any invading enemy into lethal crossfires. The society that evolved in these Casas was heavily militarised. At its peak, over 70% of the total population were destined for service in the armed forces. The recruitment rate was set as equal to the birth rate, and the remainder of the population not conscripted were engaged in supporting industries. Cadia was an industrial world, and the manufactories of the Casas supplied Applied its military with a constant stream of weapons and armoured vehicles. Everything on Cadia was affected by this. Local fashions tended towards camouflage patterns and uniform cuts. Social class was defined by military rank, and childhood itself became a series of training exercises. Cadian children were expected to be able to be performing field drills and stripping their LAS rifles before the age of 10, and would spend their teenage years in the youth armies, known on Cadia as the White Shields. This massive recruitment rate meant that Cadia's main contribution to the Imperium was in the form of armed soldiers. While about half of its armed forces would remain part of the Cadian Interior Guard, serving their careers within the Cadian system itself as part of its massively oversized planetary defence force, the other half would be shipped off world as part of the Astra Militarum. The Cadian Shock Troopers, as these regiments were known, developed one of the most famous reputations in the Imperium, Cadian troopers being widely regarded as consummate professionals, the best of the best. They fought on hundreds hundreds of battlefronts across the galaxy, only one in a thousand soldiers ever making it back to Cadia. These regiments, infantry, armour and artillery, became something of a pattern for other Imperial Guard regiments and planetary defence forces across the Imperium. The distinctive Cadian tri-dome helmet and rugged cantrail pattern LAS rifle are some of the most common models of arms and armour issued to Astra Militarum recruits, as were Cadian patterns of heavy and special weapons, Sentinel walkers and Chimera armoured transports. Cadian regiments, especially on and around Cadia itself, were often supported by white shield platoons of guardsmen in training, as well as their elite grenadiers, the Kazakin. Grenadiers is a catch-all term for the many heavy infantry detachments fielded by regiments across the Imperium. From whole formations equipped as heavy infantry, such as the Vresh Grenadiers, to elite veteran appointments like the Krieg Grenadiers. 
Amongst these, the Kasukin of Cadia were known as the elite of the elite, heavily armed assault troops fanatically loyal to the defense of Cadia itself, wearing carapace armor and armed with hotshot las guns or hell guns. They would be singled out while still in training on Cadia, but were expected to progress through service in the youth armies and shock troopers before any appointment to the Kazakim was finalized, so each would be a hardened veteran of multiple campaigns across the Imperium and within the Cadian system. Over the eight millennia since its reconstruction, Cadia weathered another ten Black Crusades. Some direct assaults on Cadia itself, like the Third, and some attempts to bypass it as Abaddon the Despoiler went in search of other targets. Cadia endured all of these, as well as countless raids and smaller attacks, its attendant battle fleet hunting and destroying renegade ships, and its dedicated inquisitorial conclaves hunting down heretics across the sector, but this proud legacy wouldn't last forever. Like many of the other Black Crusades, the 13th was preempted by a sharp rise in cult activity across nearby sectors, as well as sightings of Chaos warbands and fleets around the gate. Rogue planets fell to hordes of Chaos worshippers as the followers of Nurgle spread what became known as the Plague of Unbelief across the Imperium. Demagogues rose against remote populations, and even before the invasion started properly, the Imperium was sorely tested to contain it all. Knowing what this meant, High Command on Cadia issued a muster order, recalling all available shock trooper regiments to the homeworld, along with many other non-Cadian regiments who owed debts of honour. The Cassas themselves couldn't contain the musters, so many of these were temporarily stationed on the wide expanse known as the Tyrock Fields. But the opening salvo of this crusade would come sooner than they were expecting. As Cadian High Command came out to observe the landings at Tyrock and to greet the prestigious regiments that were coming in their defence, the Volscani Cataphracts, an elite and well-regarded heavy infantry regiment, turned traitor announcing their allegiance to the Chaos powers with a suicide assault on the heart of the Cadian defence forces. Though the Cadians rallied and cut down the traitor regiment, the damage was done. The assault had wiped out much of Cadian High Command, just as hundreds of Chaos warships started to pour from the Eye of Terror, spreading out in every direction. It fell to Ursacar E. Creed of the Cadian Eighth to assume command, taking on the title of Lord Castellan of Cadia and sending hundreds of requests for aid as the Chaos forces barreled ever closer. The initial Chaos push was a huge success, the outer planets of the system falling quickly to the invaders, Solar Mariatus became the traitor base of operations, and the prison sinks of St. Josmany's Hope were cleared out, their numbers added to the traitor forces. The Chaos fleet swept aside the Imperial ship stationed nearby, and the first of Abaddon's forces started their assault on Cadia itself, besieging Cassas across the planet. What followed was a gruelling and desperate war in which the initiative would swing back and forth as both sides poured reinforcements into the conflict. Abaddon's initial invasion destroyed many of the Cadian Khazars and pushed Imperial forces back across the planet, but was halted as Imperial reinforcements started to arrive. The Blood Angels, Dark Angels and Space Wolf chapters, along with many others, committed huge forces to the defence of the system. Astra Militarum and Tempestos Scion regiments were dispatched by the Inquisition, and Saint Celestine herself led a host of the Adeptus Auroritas to the planet's surface. But throughout this, Chaos forces continued to pour from the eye. Word bearers war bands unleashed a tide of demons and raised warp storms in an attempt to cut off the planet, and other Chaos warbands splitting off from the main thrust put pressure on nearby sectors. The traitor forces regained the initiative as the second half of their fleet emerged from the Eye of Terror, led by the colossal Blackstone Fortress Will of Eternity, captured hundreds of years before during the Gothic War, the Twelfth Black Crusade. As the Will of Eternity grew closer, desperate battles were fought for control of Cadia's planetary defences, the Imperials barely holding on in time for a second wave of reinforcements, aboard the Imperial Fist's battle station Phalanx to arrive and eventually destroy the Blackstone Fortress. And while these battles raged above, another was happening beneath the surface, where the Mechanicus Magos Belisarius Call, helped by the mysterious Necron overlord Trazin the Infinite, managed to study and reactivate the ancient Cadian pylons. As suspected, they had been part of a system designed to hold back the warp itself, and as his demon reinforcements dissipated into the ether and the warp storms disappeared, the armies of the Despoiler were finally forced to pull back from the surface of the planet. But there was one last throw of the dice to come, as the Black Legion attached massive starship engines to the remnants of their Blackstone Fortress and drove them into the planet's surface with the strength of a meteor strike.
The surface of Cadia itself cracked and split as the planet started to fall apart. The Cadian Eighth, led by Lord Castellan Creed, led a valiant rearguard as the massed Imperial forces attempted to evacuate the dying planet, and the remnants of Battlefleet Cadia tried to recover them. Millions were lost as Cadia finally fell, and with it, the ancient technology that kept the Eye of Terror at bay. As the effects of the Cadian pylons dissipated, the warp spilled over into real space, and the Cicatrix Maledictum, the Great Rift, started its spread across the galaxy. Around 3 million Cadians survived the fall of Cadia in the holds of Imperial Navy ships, but in the aftermath of the 13th Black Crusade and the loss of their homeworld, they continued to fight. Their surviving regiments bolstered nearby worlds, attempting to contain the destruction while the forces of Chaos burnt themselves out and retreated back into the warp storms. And since then, those regiments have continued to fight, still recruiting, still continuing the Cadian way of life despite the loss of their homeworld, raising and training new regiments in the same way they've always done, but now in the holds of warships en route to new battlefronts, unchanging despite the colossal changes that happened to the galaxy during its demise. In many ways, Cadia is a microcosm of the Imperium, or at least how the Imperium sees itself a totally militarized society engaged in a permanent struggle, at least in part of its own making, and framing that as a heroic opportunity rather than as the tragedy we're meant to see. But to the grizzled veterans of old Cadia, well, all that's irrelevant. Cadia stands. To them, it can do nothing else, and must continue to do so as long as there's an Imperium for it to defend. Thanks for watching. And if you'd like more lore videos about 40k, well, there's probably one just coming up there to the right. And if you'd like to support the channel, please like, subscribe, and there's a link to the Patreon in the thing below. See ya.